A very good afternoon to one and all present here. So welcome to, for the afternoon session of the fourth day for the six days online FTP on strength of materials one. So now we have uh, with us Dr. P. Uh, Jagadish, Assistant Professor, Department of Civil Engineering from uh, CIT Coimbatore. Uh, welcome you, sir. So, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so sir wants to self-introduce himself. So over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, very good afternoon to one and all present uh, in this afternoon session of uh, one week FTP program, which is on the strength of materials. Mm, I think uh, the uh, resource person who already delivered enough knowledge about the introduction about strength of materials. Um, before entering into the topic that I had given to me, I like to introduce myself. Uh, myself, uh, Dr. P. Jagdish, uh, working as an assistant professor in the Department of Civil Engineering, Quantum Institute of Technology, Coimbatore. I had graduated from uh, Government College of Engineering, Salem, 2007. And then I immediately joined my uh, professional career as an engineer in uh, SR Construction Private Limited, Gujarat, uh, Hazira. And there I had continued for uh, two years. Uh, then I shifted my career to uh, Vedanta Group of Companies, um, which is located at uh, YSA, Maharashtra. And then I joined uh, due to uh, pursuit of interest in research. I joined my a postgraduate program in structural engineering in um, Kantar Institute of Technology, uh, 2010, where I completed my graduate on uh, 12. And then immediately I started my own uh, concern uh, company on structural design on 2012 itself. Mm, then uh, I funded my own uh, company for uh, as an entrepreneur for two years uh, up to 2014. Uh, then 2014, uh, due to again interest in uh, research, I moved towards uh, teaching field uh, particularly. Mm. I had uh, joined uh, CIT as an assistant professor in 2014. Uh, while joining in CIT, I joined my uh, doctorate program under uh, Dr. A. Ramachandra Murthy, uh, principal scientist at uh, CSIR SCRC. Uh, I completed my PhD degree on 2019. Um, with a number of publication as a seven. Uh, now I'm doing my research area on uh, pozzolonic materials, material characterization, and also artificial neural network. Uh, now I am working with uh, a few more professors from abroad, like uh, Spain, China, Turkey, with respect to several projects. Um, uh, this is about my very short uh, introduction about myself. Uh, if you need to know more about me, I think you, you can visit our college website where you can see whatever the thing they had put on me. And also, uh, coming back here to my topic, today's topic, uh, theory of torsion. Uh, as you know, the basic kind that required nowadays uh, a material which is subjected to theory of torsion, and that is a torsional uh, twist. I think uh, you people hear about. Uh, uh, yeah, one of the great example that is a uh, knurling rod, uh, which is uh, uh, had a special part in uh, one of the oldest car that is ambassador. Ambassador car, uh, you know about a knurling rod, which is subjected to this uh, torsional force. Uh, we need to understand what happened in that metal um, with respect to the torsion. Uh, since it is an afternoon session, also, um, I'm not there too much to deal with. Uh, uh, in depth analysis of all those things, I will solve several problems and uh, derivations. Then I will uh, give for open uh, discussion not only on uh, the topic that we are uh, having today, um, but also for uh, whatever the researchers you are interested or you are interested to collaborate with me with respect to whatever the research I'm doing. Okay, um, thank you once again. A very good afternoon to all. So, good afternoon, sir. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Uh, First of all, I want to know about whether my screen is visible. Anybody can put in comment whether my screen is visible? It's visible, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mm, before entering into the topic, uh, theory of torsion, uh, just I want to show you one of the video um, that will have uh, whatever. Uh, this is a 10 minutes video. Just you can go through this video, then I will we will have a discussion about this video. Then I will enter into the topic uh, 
theory of torsion what it will say is uh, where it belongs and then what are the basic concept behind that I think uh, our, uh, audio is not visible for. Uh, ma'am, uh, still now the audible is not visible, ma'am. Sorry, it is not audible for ma'am. Uh, yes, sir, it's not audible, sir. Uh, just a thing, ma'am. I will share a link also, ma'am, so that uh, you can. It is available in the internet also. So that. Okay, uh, sir. People can see this uh, link so that the entire topic will be there. Or yeah. you can share this Chrome tab uh, if you are uh, going to run that video, play that video. Yeah, okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Mm. It is something add is or the. I also shared the link with you, ma'am. In uh, yeah, yes, sir. Chat yeah, box. Just, uh, yes, yeah, sir. chat box. Just to uh, open that video and uh, kindly see that video, ma'am. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. So that I can run here also in my presentation too. If audible is uh, required, just go through that thing.
hope uh, you have watched the videos. Uh, the topic that I'm going to discuss, uh, which is already discussed in that uh, video, clearly explained in video also. Um, anyhow, I also try to explain the concept behind those theory of torsion, uh, how it will work with. Um, ma'am, can I give some more time or else can I move towards presentation, madam? Uh, let the participants maybe okay. they can tell yes. us. Any participants? Okay, can we give a few more minutes so that I can move? It is 151, so I can move at um, some 154. Okay, ma'am. Okay, okay, sir. So that it will be of a 10 minutes video, which will cover both the topic that I'm going to discuss, ma'am. Okay. Sir. Any have you watched the videos? Any reply from participants so that I can proceed further? Sir, we have watched, sir. We can proceed, sir. Yeah, thank you, thank you, sir. If you see the video, it may explain everything, whatever I'm going to discuss on today's topic. Uh, the video which clearly says how the torsion will be in a simple uh, sharp material if the material behavior is different then how it will fail that is uh, discussed in that uh, video uh, coming back here as per uh, our curriculum we needed a definition for uh, torsion which is nothing but a bar is subject to a moment in a plane perpendicular to the longitudinal axis that is in plane of cross section of the member which is said to be torsion that is it is rotating in a uh, way it is generally represented in terms of uh, Newton meter or kilo Newton meter. Uh, the assumptions uh, with respect to the theory of torsion are um, the material should be of homogeneous. Uh, it should be of isotropic in nature. Homogeneous is a sense that the material is uh, uh, almost uniform in all the direction. Uh, yes, it says that it is isotropic and also it will be obeys uh, Hooke's law. Hooke's law is nothing but as you know, stress is directly proportional to strain within the elastic limit. Mm, uh, second assumption is that cross section which are plane before uh, applying the twisting moment which will remain plane even after the application of twisting moment that is uh, there is no warping takes place in the member for example i can have an example with uh, this second assumption that um, if you use a different cross section or a shape of uh, shaft for example if you use uh, a rectangular uh, section or square section 
uh, what will happen is that the warping uh, take place at the surface of the, the shaft, which will lead to uh, what we call it as the failure within the surface of the, the member itself. Hence, it is uh, recommended to use the member uh, which is having no warping. And then uh, third assumption is uh, radial line remains radial even after applying the torque. That is, uh, if you have a circular section, um, if you divide the suction uh, section equally, it, it will have uh, equal uh, uh, radial lines. The fourth assumption is that the twist along the shaft is uniform throughout. That is, whatever the length may be, uh, the twisting force applied on the length of the member, which is uh, uniform throughout the section, then the shaft is subjected to pew torsion, then there will be of no bending in that member. It is assumed that then only we can proceed further for analysis of uh, or derivation of uh, theory for torsion. Mm, then angle of twist, uh, when the shaft is subjected to a torque T at the free end, then we apply the torque at this free end. And what will happen is uh, the point A uh, on the surface of the shaft comes to position A dash. Um, the angle uh, a, O, this this uh, cross section is circular cross section. The center of cross section, what we call it as O, mm, the surface, the radius, uh, or what we call it as uh, A, uh, the fixed end, what we call it as uh, support B. Mm, the angle A, O, uh, A dash, that what we call it as uh, angle of twist. Uh, this angle of twist theta, which is represented center, and then it is measured by uh, measured in radians. Mm, distortion at the outer surface due to torque T is mm, A A dash as you see from this picture. The distortion takes place uh, at a distance of A A dash. Uh, this can be clearly understood as you see in that video how that uh, torsion takes place. Then uh, shear strain at the outer surface uh, is more when compared to inner surface. If you have any uh, hollow section, the inner section will remain uh, lesser strain, shear strain when compared to outer surface. Hence, shear strain in the outer surface is equal to distortion per unit length. The distortion is nothing but uh, change in uh, that radial uh, dimensions. Uh, distortion of the outer surface divided by length of the shaft, which can be given as A A dash divided by L. A A dash divided by A B, which can be called as a tan phi. When compared to tan phi, uh, uh, tan is very small. When compared to phi, hence I neglect tan. We can simply put as phi, which is nothing but A A dash divided by A B. Then uh, shear strain at the outer surface, which we call it as A, A dash divided by L. Uh, as you see, um, this is the outer surface of the your uh, shaft. The length of shaft is L. Uh, tan phi is nothing but opposite by your uh, uh, adjacent. Uh, that's what uh, here it is mentioned as uh, opposite by adjacent as A, A dash by divided by AB. Uh, then uh, from this uh, figure, you can understand that radius R. R is uh, nothing but a radius of the shaft, uh, which is uh, multiplied by the uh, angle of twist, which gives A A dash. Then substitute uh, this uh, equation number 2 to equation number 1. You can have phi is equal to R theta divided by L. And then uh, modulus of uh, rigidity. In some book, it is mentioned as G. Some book, it is mentioned as C. Mm, the modulus of, I will, I am going to use both the words E and G as you want to familiar with all those words. This modulus of rigidity with respect to steel is higher whereas in aluminium it goes uh, lesser value mm, approximately we has uh, 80 megapascal for uh, steel whereas the shear goes somewhat lesser those value mm, the modulus of rigidity is explained as a ratio between shear stress divided by shear strain mm, which can be say that uh, from uh, figure uh, tau divided by phi mm, phi we already determined which is nothing but r theta by l i substituting that i can get t theta by uh, l is equal to tau by r if the Q is the shear stress induced at the radius R from the center of the shaft, then uh, tau by R is equal to Q by R. Q is nothing but shear stress which is induced at the radius of small r from the center of the shaft. Mm, from equation 3 and 4, uh, C theta uh, divided by L, which can be represented as tau by R, which is equal to Q by R. This what we call it as uh, torsional uh, equation, which is used for so many problems. This can be also simplified in the videos that you had seen uh, shear set at uh, any point in the shaft is proportional uh, to the distance at the point from the axis of the shaft hence uh, mm, uh, shear stress is maximum at the outer surface and shear stress is zero at the axis of shaft can be noted uh, from this uh, 
this equation what we call it as uh, torsional equation and this equation is applied for uh, so many applications as i said earlier if you go for uh, ambassador car if you see that video earlier they can have a shaft in that ambassador car what we call it as a uh, knurling rod uh, in, in the in uh, practical we call it as a knurling rod uh, whereas or else if you go for <coughs> wind uh, turbine you have a central shaft thing that is also subject to this kind of torsional force where the torsional uh, force can be calculated using this simple equation mm. then apart from this uh, uh, you want to know about uh, torsional rigidity uh, i think uh, uh, previous uh, <coughs> resource person can discuss about a flexural rigidity of a flexural member similarly for a torsional member also there is a torsional rigidity is there uh, the torsional rigidity what we call it as uh, c into j that uh, j thing that uh, i will polar moment of <coughs> inertia that we will uh, discuss on upcoming slide uh, let the twisting moment um, produced uh, by a twisting radians in a length l can be represented as uh, by following equation this equation is again uh, taken from your uh, uh, torsional equation um, for the given shaft the twist is therefore proportional to the twisting moment uh, as you know in the beam uh, uh, the same manner here also we can calculate the flexural rigidity as in the terms of shear uh, sorry <coughs> torsional rigidity torsional rigidity is nothing but c into j c is your modulus of uh, rigidity where j is polar moment of inertia then uh, shear stress in the shaft uh, when the shaft is subject to equal and opposite uh, end couples uh, whose axis coincide with the axis of the shaft and the shaft is said to be in pure torsion and at any point the section of the shaft stress will be induced then this uh, type of stress induced in that particular shaft what we call it as uh, stress, uh, shear stress mm. maximum torque or power shaft can be uh, transmitted from one pulley to another uh, by using by calculating the strength of the shaft uh, if you want to calculate the strength of the torque in a shaft it can be called as t is equal to pi by 16 into tau into d cube in upcoming slide we are also going to discuss how this thing is arrived uh, then for hollow circular shaft at uh, t is equal to pi by 16 into tau into d power 4 minus uh, d power 4 divided by d where small d is inner diameter of shaft where capital d is the outer diameter of shaft um, polar moment of inertia um, yes you take uh, one of the assumption in uh, <coughs> theory of torsion is that the, the section that you assumed should be of uh, circular uh, section if you assume it as circular section and then uh, the polar uh, that is the moment of inertia on both the axis will remain same uh, hence um, the axis uh, as per the perpendicular axis theorem you know i z z is equal to i x x plus i y y for a circular section the moment of inertia is pi divided by 4 into d power 4 um, which can be added twice in order to get the polar moment of inertia Mm, uh, the polar moment of inertia for a circular section is pi divided by 32 into d power 4. And the moment of inertia of a plane area with respect to an axis perpendicular to the plane of the uh, circular section is called as polar moment of inertia. Um, maximum torque transmitted by a circular solid shaft. Uh, this can be explained by this. Uh, I think, uh, um, this can be explained here. The maximum torque uh, transmitted by a uh, circular shaft is obtained in the same way as of that of uh, solid shaft uh, uh, the maximum torque transmitted by a circular solid shaft is obtained from the maximum shear stress induced at the outer surface of the solid shaft uh, if you do look into this picture it has a cross section with a uh, radius of capital r where r is a small inner radius where the inner thickness of the shaft is considered as a small dr uh, where tau is maximum shear stress induced at the outer surface where r is the radius of uh, shaft small q is shear stress at the radius r from the center uh, consider an elementary ring of the thickness small dr at a distance r from center of your circular shaft mm, the area of the ring can be calculated as a is equal to you know 2 pi r into dr mm, this equation uh, but uh, as per your uh, torsional equation thing you know that uh, tau by capital R, that is uh, shear stress at the outer surface divided by the radius of circular shaft, which is equal to um, shear stress induced at the surface divided by radius at that particular surface that is given by here. Uh, shear, set, uh, shear stress at the radius R, which can be given as uh, Q is equal to 
shear stress divided by radius of the radius of the shaft into the distance at which that shear stress need to be calculated mm, then it can be simplified as a tau into r by r um, turning force on the elementary circular ring can be calculated as a shear stress at that ring into area of the ring uh, as you know we are calculating the shear stress at a distance of small r uh, the shear stress at that uh, radius small r is equal to q q is in q into that particular small area we can ca calculate it as uh, da and da is the area of that small ring and then uh, you know from uh, previous equation small q is equal to tau into uh, small r divided by capital r uh, into 2 pi r by substituting all those value and here uh, we can get uh, turning force on that elementary circular string uh, that is uh, we calculating the um, turning force in this small ring uh, which is nothing but uh, tau by r into 2 pi r square into uh, dr um, now the turning moment due to the turning force on the elementary ring can be calculated as uh, dt uh, which is equal to turning force on the ring into distance of the ring from the axis um, hence uh, you can calculate turning force on the ring as from previous uh, equation here um, as uh, tau by capital r into 2 pi r square in dr into r uh, by resolving it we can get a turning moment which is nothing but um, tau divided by capital r into 2 pi r cube into dr uh, the total turning moment is obtained by integrating the above equation between the limits o and r o is nothing but the center of the shaft where r is nothing but the radius of the shaft we calculated the turning moment at a distance of small r uh, hence we required this turning moment through the uh, cross section of the shaft which can be obtained by integrating this turning moment hence t is equal to um, g, uh, o2 r uh, of uh, this small uh, d small d capital t which is equal to integrating all those part by substituting uh, um, this equations uh, here um, integration of 0 to uh, sorry o to r uh, tau by r into 2 pi r cube dr uh, since 2 pi is uh, numerical integer i have taken outside this uh, 2 pi um, integrating only r cube uh, we can get r power 4 divided by 4 by integrating this and substituting value um, 0 to r here it is not o to r it is 0 to r uh, by substituting uh, that 0 to r equation we can get um, as tau by r into 2 pi a into r power 4 divided by 4 then uh, by cancelling r r we can get uh, tau into pi by 2 into r cube mm. hence uh, i will take it as uh, r as d by 2 by simplifying it we can get as tau into uh, tau divided by um, 16 into d d cube uh, this is nothing but total turning moment in a solid uh, shaft whereas if you take a circular uh, sorry hollow shaft this is what uh, the turning moment in a solid circular shaft and if you take a solid circular shaft the total turning moment is uh, calculated by uh, dividing the shaft into number of rings with a radius of uh, dr small d small r the, by integrating that uh, small uh, area da we will get the total turning moment of the solid circular shaft then when we move towards the next uh, heading of torque transmitted by a hollow circular shaft the torque transmitted by a hollow circular shaft is obtained um, as similar to that of your solid shaft here uh, the hollow radius is taken as capital ri whereas um, the entire radius of the section is taken as r not r not is nothing but outer radius of the shaft whereas ri is inner radius of the shaft where small r is the uh, distance between the ring and uh, center of uh, your shaft uh, dr is the thickness of the uh, that small ring we are uh, taken into account of the calculation uh, where tau is the maximum shear stress induced at the outer surface of the shaft uh, small q is shear stress induced on the elementary ring mm. shear stress at elementary ring is obtained uh, from uh, previous uh, uh, your uh, theory of torsion equation tau by r naught is equal to q by r uh, where small q can be calculated as tau divided by r naught into r mm, where uh, turning force on the ring is nothing but uh, force is nothing but stress into area mm, you can get uh, for stress as small q since it is a shear stress we can substitute a small q into da 
mm, yes you know for previous q value we can substitute tau divided by r into r where here the r is nothing but r not r not is outer radius of the shaft mm, where tau divided by r not into r by substituting q value here we can get uh, 2 pi into tau divided by r not into r square divided by dr uh, turning moment uh, dt can be calculated as turning force into distance of the ring from the center uh, where uh, it can be calculated as 2 pi into tau divided by r not r, r cube dr as you know uh, we are integrating uh, a small elementary uh, elementary ring which is uh, present throughout the cross section uh, hence the total turning moment or total torque is obtained by integrating the above small part uh, which is lie between r ri and r naught hence r i is nothing but inner radius of the shaft where r naught is outer radius of the shaft mm, capital t is equal to integration of r i to r naught of the small uh, ring, small ring mm, if i if we integrate that small ring from r i to r naught we can get an equation as uh, pi into tau divided by r naught uh, into r power 4 divided by small r power 4 where limits are r i to r naught since the tau pi and r naught are constant we will take out of the integral part uh, by substituting the limits in the integration part we can get uh, capital r naught power 4 minus r i power 4 divided by 4 and then uh, uh, d naught is outer inter when we want to express this equation in terms of diameter uh, we can say that uh, d naught is outer diameter of the shaft where d is the inner diameter of the shaft then uh, you can have d naught divided by 2 as uh, r naught and di divided by 2 as r i by substituting this two thing that is uh, r naught and r i value in this equation we can get uh, total torque uh, t in terms of diameter mm, by substituting this value and simplifying it we can get uh, equation as uh, total torque as pi divided by 16 into tau into d power d naught power uh, d naught power 4 minus di power 4 divided by d naught mm, this is what the total torque of uh, your shaft mm, if you take polar moment uh, polar modulus of the section for a circular shaft we already discussed about polar modulus for the solid shaft here we are going to discuss for circular shaft or hollow shaft mm, polar modulus is defined as the ratio of the polar moment of inertia to the radius of the shaft uh, it is also called it as torsional sectional modulus uh, zp which is nothing but j divided by r where j is pi divided by 32 into d power 4 where r is d divided by 2 by simplifying it we can get a polar modulus um, polar section modulus as pi divided by 16 into d power cube uh, in the case of uh, circular uh, hollow shaft uh, j can be written as pi divided by 32 into d naught power uh, 4 minus uh, di power 4 uh, or can be substituted as d naught by 2 Hence, uh, we can represent uh, polar section modulus for a hollow circular shaft as pi divided by 16 d naught into d naught power 4 minus d i power 4. Then, uh, power transmitted by the shaft, which is can be represented as a power which is uh, equal to 2 pi into n into t divided by 60. T is the total torque um, where uh, uh, omega, which can be represented as 2 pi n divided by 60. Uh, we can uh, represent power as t into uh, omega uh, that omega can be represented as 2 pi n divided by 60 um, once the uh, expression of the torque for solid or whole obtained the power uh, transmitted of the sh shaft can be calculated by this equation where capital n is nothing but rpm of the shaft where omega is angular speed of the shaft and t is mean torque transmitted in terms of newton meter or kilo newton meter whatever it may be we can convert the unit of uh, whatever with respect to we needed then uh, 2 pi is the constant uh, these are the main uh, four problem four uh, formulas you want to remember for the first part of the session uh, that is uh, section model uh, sorry polar section modulus and um, theory of torsion formula then uh, for hollow circular shaft similarly then uh, in order to find out uh, our application of these equations in the problem hmm, i can have several problem as i said um, a solid circular shaft of 150 mm diameter is used to transmit torque uh, find the maximum torque transmitted by the shaft if the maximum shear stress is induced to the shaft is uh, 45 megapascal uh, 
uh, diameter of the shaft capital D can be taken as 150 mm uh, maximum shear stress tau which is given in the problem as 45 megapascal um, okay before entering into the problem just let us wait for a few minutes so that uh, participants can ask if any questions are there with respect to this four problem sorry four for loss or else i can uh, move towards the problem which will last for another uh, few minutes i think uh, these are the basic things that uh, uh, we are uh, getting to practice with uh, the formulas for a torsion thing do you have any questions hope uh, everyone is clear with uh, these headings and these formulas since uh, um, under our uh, graduate itself uh, uh, undergraduate itself we are more exposure to these basic things those basic thing only i'm going to cover now just take and wait for uh, two or three minutes so that uh, if you have any question you can uh, uh, rise or else i can proceed for problem I think uh, there is no question posted in uh, Gmeet also. Okay, then I can proceed further. I'm going to solve simple. Uh, Four problems uh, with respect to this uh, torsional theory. Mm, a solid shaft of 150 mm diameter is used to transmit torque. Uh, find the maximum torque transmitted by the shaft. If the maximum shear stress is induced on the shaft is 45 megapascal. Mm, diameter of shaft is considered as 150 mm, and the maximum shear stress tau is considered as 45 newton per mm square. Then, as per your uh, maximum torque calculated by solid circular shaft. Uh, T can be calculated as pi by 16 into tau into d cube, um, where you know the value of uh, limiting value for T by keeping the value T there, then substituting the diameter, we can calculate uh, what is the torque required. Okay. Um, the maximum torque required is uh, nothing but 29.8 kilonewton meter. Uh, this is a simple problem. They can either give the value of uh, torque and ask us to calculate maximum shear stress or they will give maximum shear stress then they ask to calculate our torque and then they will give both of this and then they will uh, ask us to calculate the diameter of uh, shaft we are using but in actual practical case what will happen is um, we know the maximum shear stress of a material for example if you take a steel um, or uh, alloy material uh, the as per experimental reading we know the what is the maximum shear stress induced with that and by simulation model we know what is the a maximum torque uh, that can be applied on that particular shaft from those two value you can calculate what is the thickness of the member required by using this formula then uh, second uh, the shear stress uh, is uh, the shear stress in your solid shaft is uh, not to exceed 40 newton per mm square when the torque transmitted is uh, 2000 newton meter uh, determine the diameter of the shaft as i said this is applied to the practical problem where uh, the value of uh, shear stress is given and uh, torque is also given you want to calculate the diameter of the shaft mm, as per this problem the diameter can be calculated as uh, the 16 t divided by pi d uh, cubic uh, root is taken there uh, from which you can calculate the diameter of the shaft as 136.2 mm then uh, a hollow circular shaft 20 mm thick transmits 300 kilowatt power at 200 rpm uh, determine the external diameter of the shaft if the shear strain due to torsion is not to exceed 0.0086 uh, take molus of rigidity at, uh, rigidity as 80 megapascal uh, as you know this molus of rigidity indicates uh, the member material used for the theory of torsion is uh, uh, steel 
then uh, speed n is given as 200 rpm uh, shear strain phi is given as 0.0086 then the value of uh, c is given as uh, uh, 80 sorry uh, 80 megapascal uh, which is which can be uh, applied in the terms of newton per mm square as 0.8 into 10 power 5 newton per mm square uh, where d naught is external dia of the shaft and d i is the internal dia of the shaft and then d naught which can be represented as d i plus 2 t uh, thickness of the shaft is represented as 20 mm then d i is nothing but d naught minus uh, 40 uh, as you know the power transmitted p is equal to uh, tau into sorry t into omega uh, which is nothing but we can express that uh, power transmitted as 2 pi n uh, t into 60 t divided by 60 uh, you know the value of the power transmitted as yes, uh, 300 kilowatt uh, the kilowatt can be represented in terms of watt as uh, 3 uh, lakh watts which is equal to 2 pi into n uh, 200 rpm and torque t uh, if we substitute uh, the value for uh, um, n and uh, power value you can determine the value of the torque t value t can be found out as 14.324 uh, kilo newton meter uh, sometimes it can be represented newton per mm also uh, since we, we are need of finding another uh, uh, thing that is uh, external diameter of the hollow circular shaft should be find out uh, as we know c is equal to shear stress by shear strain uh, shear stress is nothing but 0.8 into 10 power 5 uh, that is 80 mega pascal uh, shear stress is uh, divided by shear strain uh, which is also given in problem as 0.006 then shear stress can be calculated as uh, modulus of rigidity into shear strain um, which is calculated as tau value as 68.8 uh, newton per mm square and then uh, the torque in a circular shaft can be calculated by a formula t is equal to pi divided by 16 into um, tau into d naught power 4 minus uh, d i power 4 divided by d naught uh, if we substitute the value of torque which is obtained previously from here i am substituting that value then tau value which obtained on um, above 68.8 then i know the terms of uh, di in d naught that i will substitute later uh, by simplifying this um, we can get the terms in terms of both d naught and di um, as you know here uh, di can be represented in terms of d naught that is also substituted here then uh, simplifying it you can get an equation in terms of d naught on uh, both side Mm, this will be of equation on both side that is uh, d naught cube minus 60 d naught square minus 5027 uh, d naught minus uh, 16000 which is equal to 0 this is the equation we are getting uh, we want to try a section uh, that the value must be obtained by trial and error method alone uh, by using trial and error method uh, you want to find out d naught value or you want to substitute the d naught value here finding out which is which should be nearer to equal to zero that uh, that trial you want to do um, initially uh, they started with uh, the d naught value as 100 and find out uh, the left hand side which will be either equal to zero or not if uh, if we substitute d naught value directly to this equation we can get the value in terms of negative and then uh, go for another 10 mm increase and then d naught value that is 110 is taken into account then substituted in this equation mm, then find out the right side value it is converted into positive and then therefore the d naught value lies in between 100 to 110 and also another thing you want to observe is the negative value is too much higher which indicates that the outer dia is not nearer to the d naught value that is it should not be nearer to 100 or 101 102 103 since the negative value is so much higher uh, when compared to positive value uh, since the negative value is 11 1 lakh 18 thousand whereas uh, positive value is 36 thousand this indicates that uh, d naught value is something lying nearer to 110 that is it may be of 109 108 something like that uh, then uh, we want to go another trial uh, that is uh, substituting d naught which is equal to 108 mm uh, you can get uh, still the value as 1194 which should be taken into consideration then we can uh, optimize this value as uh, finding out this value as uh, outer diameter of shaft as 108 mm 
this is uh, by this uh, by this method only we can find out uh, the outer dia of uh, the shaft for a hollow circular shaft and then if you go for uh, another problem uh, two shafts of the same material and of same lens are subjected to the same torque if the first shaft uh, is of cir solid circular section and the second shaft is of hollow circular section and the internal diameter is uh, two third of the outer diameter and the maximum shear stress developed in each shaft is same in each shaft is same compare the weight of the shaft mm. this one we'll take a little break for drinking water just as mm. Okay, uh, two shafts of the uh, same material are used uh, to subject to a torsion and of same length are subjected to the same torque. Uh, if the first shaft is of solid circular section and the second shaft is of hollow circular section, whose internal diameter is a two third of outside diameter and the maximum shear stress is developed uh, in each shaft is the same compare the weight of the shaft. Mm, then uh, two shafts of the same material and same length, one is uh, solid and the other one is hollow, the transmitter the same torque. Which develops the same maximum shear stress. Tor uh, torque uh, transmitted on solid circular shaft is, uh, which can be obtained from previous equation, uh, torque T value, which is equal to pi divided by 6 into shear stress into d cube. Uh, torque transmitted by the hollow shaft, uh, which is already derived, and it is found that um, in terms of uh, diameter, torque T is pi divided by 16 into tau into d naught power 4 minus di power 4 divided by d naught mm. and then uh, we convert uh, we substitute uh, the diameter di value as uh, two third of d naught uh, if we substitute that value and simplify it we can get d naught power 4 minus 16 by 18 1 into d naught power 4 divided by d naught and then uh, this d naught goes upside then uh, we cancel uh, d naught uh, above and bottom we can get pi uh, divided by 16 tau into 65 uh, d naught cube divided by 81 and then uh, as a torque transmitted by solid and hollow shafts are equal <coughs> hence uh, solid uh, left hand side is a solid circular shaft and the right hand side is uh, hollow circular shaft when we equate both side then uh, pi divided by 16 tau is getting cancelled on both side Hence, uh, d power cube is equal to 65 divided by 81 into d naught power cube. We can say that uh, it is uh, 1 by 3 uh, in the root 1 by 3 of uh, 65 divided by 81 d naught uh, whole cube uh, 3. And then if we simplify it, we can get d naught is equal to d is equal to uh, 0.929 d naught. Now, the weight of the solid shaft is compared as a density into volume of the shaft. Mm, weight density we can consider weight density as w then volume can be calculated as area into length area is pi by 4 into d square for a mm, solid circular section whereas if you take hollow circular shaft uh, weight of the section uh, weight density of the material into the area cross section of hollow shaft into length uh, where area cross section of the hollow shaft can be given as pi divided by 4 into mm, d naught square minus d i square into l uh, if we simplify this uh, weight of hollow shaft, uh, which can be written as, as uh, weight uh, weight density into pi divided by 4 into pi divided by 9 into d naught square into L. And divide equation uh, 4 by equation 5, that is this equation, that is weight of solid shaft divided by weight of hollow shaft. And we can get uh, weight of solid shaft divided by weight of hollow shaft, which is equal to 9 divided by 5 into d square divided by d naught square. We know the value of d in terms of d naught, uh, which is uh, represented here. D naught is equal to 0 0.929 d naught. If you substitute that thing here, uh, we can simplify this and then find out uh, the d naught square getting cancelled. Then weight of the solid shaft divided by weight of the hollow shaft can be summarized as equal to 1.55. Uh, this can be obtained um, uh, simply by substituting the d naught value. Uh, these are the major four types of the problem with respect to torsion. Okay, uh, they may vary the material or they may vary the density of the 
material or they give the numerical value for this uh, problem in order to find out uh, accurate results. <coughs> Uh, with this, uh, I want to conclude uh, this session. I will give an uh, open discussion for uh, next uh, few more minutes, not only on this theory of uh, torsion thing, but also on the research area who are very much related uh, or related to working in Pasolonic material or in machine learning methods or in uh, the area, whatever I am working with. Uh, I'm there to help for you. Mm. I will wait for a few more. We need for an open discussion. These are the four major types of the problem that uh, you can see in the uh, topic that I had given to me. Mm. That is uh, one is uh, power calculation, another one is diameter calculation, third one is uh, uh, same application with respect to comparison of hollow shafts. Okay. I think uh, I can see if there is no questions. Yes, sir. we can have a 15 minutes break, sir. Uh, okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Not only uh, on this topic, whatever the people will be interested with the research also, uh, they can have a discussion, ma'am. So that I can wait for a few more minutes, ma'am. So, dear participants, if you have any queries, Please ask. Okay, ma'am. Then can I join at three o'clock for an extra session, madam? Oh, yes, sir. You can join at three o'clock for the next session. Okay, madam. Okay, madam. Thank you. Thank you so much, madam. Thank you.